rainbow exhaustion. I love this term. Help me with it. <laughs> I think, well, rainbow exhaustion, I think, is something that a lot now, of by people the way, are nobody, beginning to nobody feel. Nobody can say it. Nobody can say it. Everybody I feels everyone, it. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> and, and it has nothing to do with being anti-LGBT. It has nothing to, be, to do with being homophobic or whatever. It's just the fact that we get so much... Um, so many lectures about the LGBT community and how we need to treat them and everything they've gone through, and there's rainbows everywhere, that it's we're just kind of tired of it um, after a while. Like, I've seen enough. And it, again, it has nothing to do with not liking it, because even LGBT people are tired of rainbows being everywhere. <laughs> Colorado Republican Party has, well, an ally called the Log Cabin Republicans. Yes, there are gay conservatives as well. Valdemir. No, Valdemar. I knew I was going to mess you it got, up. You got it right there the second time. Yeah, Valdemar <laughs> Archuleta. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here with you How long today. have you been president of Log Cabin Republicans? For two years now. Why is the gay Republican group called Log Cabin Republicans? I've never understood. That's a very good question. Well, back in the late 70s when the group was formed nationally, they originally called themselves the Lincoln Club. And then they oh. found out there already oh, was, was a Lincoln. Lincoln Club. So they took the Lincoln part and kind of connected it to him growing up in a log cabin. Um, and that's where it came from. And so we are now the Log Cabin Republicans, and Log Cabin has nothing to do with us being gay, or any insinuations on <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, which some people have asked me about. It's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, Abe, Abe needs to come out of the closet. <laughs> There's no question about it. You came up with a term. I would just jump into this part and then cover some other stuff. You called it rainbow exhaustion? Rainbow exhaustion. I love this term. Help me with it. <laughs> I think, well, rainbow exhaustion, I think, is something that a lot now, of by people the way, are nobody, beginning to Nobody feel. can say it. Nobody can say it. Everybody I feels everyone, it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it has nothing to do with being anti-LGBT. It has nothing to, be, to do with being homophobic or whatever. It's just the fact that we get so much... Um, so many lectures about the LGBT community and how we need to treat them and everything they've gone through, and there's rainbows everywhere, that it's we're just kind of tired of it um, after a while. Like, I've seen enough. And it, again, it has nothing to do with not liking it, because even LGBT people are tired of rainbows being everywhere. But we get it. <laughs> we get it already. I used to have a little rainbow pin on the back of my backpack at work, and a few months ago I took it off because I'm like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of rainbows you know everywhere. Because you're a homophobe. A you are, you're a hater. Anymore. You're a homophobe. You're a hater. You're not the first one to call me that. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I get it. It's like, it's like we get it. Yeah. We're there. I'm, I'm older than you. There was a time. <laughs> I've always been amazed by the success of the gay movement. Yes. I've, I've got cousins who are gay and what they had to go through coming out. I have, mm -hmm. I think about the movement from um, Stonewall to uh, to today to just legalization of marriage, you know, and how fast that happened. Yeah. Maybe not fast enough for a lot of folks, obviously, but how quickly that seemed to have happened it, over the course of of civilization mm -hmm. to there was record speed, you know. And you look at it and you go, no, it wasn't record speed. There was a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of movement, there was a lot of societal change, there was a lot of legal change, but oh my God, and now it's passe. It is so yeah. passe, it's over, it's done, it's mm -hmm. like, we, we get it. Yeah, and especially the past 10 years or so, it, it has moved really fast. Um, yeah. There was a buildup to it, you know, the Stonewall, Stonewall riots happened right. in 69, and then it kind of led to the movement, uh, the modern movement to, to today. But I used to be on the board of directors for the Colorado Springs Pride Organization, and I don't remember which one ended first, but the um, DOMA and Don't Ask, Don't Tell, right. the, so that um, same-sex marriage became legal and our military can be openly gay. Happened about the same time. Those two battles were kind of like the last real fights we had. And I remember 
the first board meeting we had after, like I said, whichever one was yeah, the right. second one to go, um, someone even asked, like, what do we fight for now? And the room just was kind of quiet. And then we just moved on. Um, well, we'll always have to like fight for something, which is kind of true. Kind but on of, a systemic but level, it's of, like it's been. But kind we of have not. My, the my feeling at the time was, once gay marriage was solidified, mm-hmm. my thinking was at least a third of of the gay community are us. Mm-hmm. When I say us, I'm talking about hardcore free marketeer, libertarian-leaning uh, yes. civil rights folks who wanted government to leave us alone. Mm-hmm. You know, that these are, these are people who just, they want government out of their lives instead of the socialists yes. who want to organize everything. I'm thinking, this is, this is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And instead, what I think has happened is the LGB community, because I remember it was just the LGB before it came into the LGBT community, yeah. has now turned into the LGBTQ something IA plus uh, mm-hmm. thing, has turned into, <laughs> into a um, North Korean style intimidation cancel culture um, uh, thing where there's an indoctrination, there's a fear mm-hmm. of losing your job, you have to be careful. And a lot of people are, are part of, of the DEI diversity squad because they don't want to be hurt. They don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to be called yes. a hater. They don't want to be called racist. And that's, that's not what the movement was all mm-hmm. about. The movement was about you know, be who you are, not forced speech, not all the rest. So when I mm-hmm. heard, and I never heard it before today, the idea of rainbow exhaustion, it's like... <laughs> I know what this man's talking about. Yeah, and a lot of people feel it. Um, but a lot of people in the gay community feel it. Help me with that They part. do. There are a lot of um, people in the gay community or the, the larger LGBT community who do feel it, who kind of like, especially when you know every time you see something come on, they're kind of, you're kind of part of this conversation they're bringing in, and you kind of feel like, I, I don't want to be a part of that. Like, stop, stop talking about me. You feel used. Leave me alone. A little bit, yes. You feel like you're, and you're being... And I kind of, like what you were saying, I feel like the natural progression would have been for the LGBT movement to become a very libertarian in philosophy, like just leave us alone. You do you, we'll do us, let's all just be. Rather than to move into where it's almost like the bullied have become the bullies and, and that they weren't allowed to do anything, they were oppressed, and now they're the ones like, all right, now that we're up here, you have to do what we say um, it's very odd that that transformation I like the way happened. You, the way you put that, the, the bullies have become the bullies. It is true. It, and I, it's exactly what I feel. And it's, it's really, it's, it's very sad mm-hmm. the, the way that's happened. Also, it's got to be kind of weird that uh, advertising, there used to be a way that companies would send signals through their advertisement yeah. that they were... They were gay friendly. You know, there'd be a triangle here or a couple yeah. guys here, and they go. And if you were in the know, you go, oh, I see what they're doing. Yeah. But now it's it is in your face. You know, mm-hmm. the gay couple is kissing in the ads, and you know, it's fine. It's great. But I wonder, from your point of view, is it like we get it, guys? Yeah. Stop using us. You know. It is, because really, like, now, um, and there was a thing, there, uh, log cabin Republicans have a media kind of sidekick to their organization called um, Outspoken, and they have an uh, Outspoken Middle East section, which is talking about a lot of things happening in the Middle East and other countries where there actually is oppression, yeah. but they kind of highlighted last year, they showed all the American logos, how all the American companies changed their logos but for their Middle East divisions, they changed nothing. So the places where they should be fighting for us, they're doing nothing. But in America, they're putting all the rainbows up. And it's because of money. They want, they're doing it to virtue signal to say, like, oh, look, we're so inclusive. We're such good people. And at this point in history, like, you don't have, we're, we're going to assume that about everyone until you prove me otherwise. So if I meet someone on the street, I assume they don't care that I'm gay until they prove me otherwise because like 95 of the people, 95% of people do not care. I made that number up, but I think it's very high. <laughs> I think um, you're right. I have, 
I live my life, you know, out here in Colorado with a big brown homo and no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anyone, like, there's no, yeah, there's no, like, evangelist, invent, evangelical Christians hiding in bushes with butterfly nets trying to capture me. Or I never come across any um, pushback on it. I, I live my life fine. So, um it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to walk around with a symbol saying, I'm okay with gay people in the same way. Like, I don't need someone to wear something saying, like, I'm not racist. or I'm right. not. Because we're at a point in America with our society where we can assume right. we're all fine with each other until you prove otherwise. It's kind of like the, the baby on board bumper sticker. Yeah. It's like... Oh, I'm glad you had that because yeah, I was gonna, way. I was gonna ram you in the, I was gonna <laughs> exactly. slam the back of your car. But now that you have a baby, I, now I, I'll uh, be careful. I'll be careful. <laughs> I'll be careful not to rear end you. It's, it is interesting that corporations aren't leaders; they're followers. They are. And so now the cultural change has happened. So they put all the rainbow flags. If they were leaders, they put the rainbow flags on their logos in the Middle East. They would. You know, you know, and, um, and our countries where there there are issues going on. No, um, serious but issues. But in the Western world, um, nobody cares. Yeah. yeah, so they're doing it, like I said, to virtue signal to kind of be like, look at us and look how good we are. Um, but even that, I feel like, is starting to change. People are kind of tired yeah, of that. The same thing, and when, they're starting to be pushed when you, back. When I watch that. it on TV, and it's like, oh, let's see, we're five minutes into the <laughs> sitcom. Cue gay character about now yeah. and income. Oh, now it's time for the trans character about. N- it's like, oh, give me a break. It is. Um, and yeah, you, you can tell like, they're not doing it because they want to make like actual change or they want to actually help the community. Um, they're doing it because they want to check a box. Yeah, they're checking the boxes as the things they have to do to remain relevant with the. Um, crowd that they assume is watching their shows or, or right. buying their products. Um, According to Hollywood, if you took a regular Hollywood program, uh, apparently you know forty percent of the population is gay and at least twenty five percent is trans. So <laughs> it, it has to. Has I to know there is too much. Um, it's making it so that being gay is not as fun as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, <clears throat> it's just too common now. It's too ordinary. It's not fun. It's lost its edge. Um, <laughs> it's lost its edge. Yeah, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy is just not fun yeah. to watch anymore. But what's funny is um, I was talking to you earlier about that we were at Colorado Springs Pride last weekend, yeah. and we made an observation about all these flags because they have a flag for, like, every sexuality or preference or fetish or whatever. You know, whatever you're into <laughs> sexually, there's a flag you can wave around to show that's who you are. But there's no gay flag. There's no flag that simply means I am a man who's attracted to other men. That flag really? does not exist. And we even looked it up on our phones, and there isn't one. There is a, there is a flag that means like you're attracted to masculinity, but it, it can be anyone. You know, you can be a straight woman and wave that flag. No one has that flag, by the way, because you know being attracted to masculinity is um, so toxic. So, like, what kind of what kind of flags? Are there? Well, there were flags like there used to be. If you went to a Pride event years ago, you'd see the leather flag and the bear flag, which right. the bears like the, you know the larger hairy gay men, and the leather yeah. is kind of like you know those stereotypical uh-huh. guy with the leather hat and right. the chaps and the. Right. You don't. We didn't see not one of those flags at Pride. So it's almost like the gay men have been removed and they've been replaced <laughs> by everyone what else. What other flags would you? See? So um, if I there's would a le- have... the lesbians have their own flag. Right. It has some kind of like axe on it which is <laughs> for some reason i heard that that's that's a symbol there's uh, a it's not an axe so don't get mad at me i forget what it's called but it, it looks like a double-headed axe and it's on this flag and uh, it's for stay, the lesbians stay away from lesbians i <laughs> yeah, got I that all right i kind of like it i, I want to axe on my flag <laughs> so you're you're so mainstream now yeah there's no and in some ways i'm okay with that um, but then it's like, can we just remove the G altogether? Can you guys just take the movement, drop us off, and keep the train going? Keep the train. We'll stay back here. At- <laughs> All right, let, me, let me talk to you about that. So log cabin Republicans have been around yes. since the mid-'70s. And it must have been difficult 
to be a conservative gay mm-hmm. man. You know, listen, I, I grew up in Colorado. I went to CU. I was in rock and roll. I was a, uh, in theater. Mm-hmm. I did, uh, I was, had a lighting company. Uh, I did, I, I was always the iconoclast being a libertarian conservative in the arts world. And so it, it was lonely. Mm-hmm. But I would imagine being in the gay community and being conservative was extra lonely because it's very easy for the left to pigeonhole conservative mm-hmm. as evangelical and gay bashing. When in fact, that is a weird subset. That is not what being conservative is about, at least in my yeah. world. But it, it, it's so easy to pigeonhole and say, oh yeah, Republicans hate gays. Now there's a, there's a group that that was a big deal for. That's a social conservative. But monetary, fiscal conservatives, mm-hmm. we don't care. It's just not on our radar. But it, was it hard? Um, I, I in, in, inside the gay was. community, you know, it's gotta, yeah, be, it's it's gotta of... be hard to be at the gay bar, you know. <laughs> so tell me about you. I'm a Republican. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it has been difficult. Um, I haven't been a gay conservative for a long time. I actually, when I was talking about being on the board of directors for the Pride Center, I was more of a lefty gay. Although I, I feel like my stance has been the What's same. It, is, it, is it easier to come out as a homosexual or as a Republican? As a homosexual. It's easier you know, to come I'll out? Say this, like I've said, nobody cares that I'm gay. I've not had any pushback, even when I go to Republican events. And I do know that that subset is there. There may be some people here who aren't happy I'm here, but they don't say anything. Right. They're quiet because they know that that's just not the position to have anymore. So no one cares that I'm gay. I never get any pushback or hate from that anywhere, but I do get hate for being a Republican. It's easier to come out gay <laughs> yes. as it is to say, yeah. I'm a Republican. If you were to tell, like, put me on the street yep. outside the studio and the first person to come up to tell them either I'm gay or I'm a Republican, I would much rather tell them I'm gay than to tell them I'm a Republican. So because just the what's response your, What's your biggest, what, what, where would you fear being hit more? Walking around, gay f- hat or a <laughs> Trump hat? Trump hat. Yeah, well, that's an easy one. My Trump hat's fabulous, by the way. It's like completely rhinestoned out. It weighs <laughs> like ten pounds. <laughs> but I also uh, feel like like we need we need to go into these places, and a lot of times we are afraid of the response from people. What about you? Was, because was, we see things on like social yeah. media where like someone comes in with a Trump hat and they get stuff thrown at them, and. Yeah. Um, I, I walk around in both worlds representing the other side, and I, I haven't had a big problem with it. Um, there was a, actually, we had a log cabin Republican meeting in Las Vegas uh, about a year and a half ago for their annual meeting, and a bunch of us went out to one of the gay bars there afterwards, and some of the guys had like Reagan shirts on. I think I had like a, an, a, a flag jacket with a I have a shirt with Joe Biden in a Trump hat on it. <laughs> and we had no problems. Right. Um, there were actually a few people. It's funny. They'd come up to us like, and they would be like, I like your shirt. And they yeah, turn they're, around they're... and walk away. Like they don't want to say it loud enough so other people can hear them. What a shame. Um, what a shame that they have to be quiet about yeah. it. Yeah. That, for me, I find that I find that sad. It is sad. And that happened last year several times at Pride. We'd have people come up to the booth. And tell us that they appreciate what we're doing. They follow us on social media and they're glad we're there. And then we'll invite them to our events. And then they'll say something in, along the lines of, well, I can't be seen with you guys. But they're at a pride festival. Yeah. And this is a festival that's supposed to be celebrating diversity and tolerance. And uh, Let me, <laughs> help me on this, Val. This is a public pride festival yes. where people are out celebrating people's sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. And we now live in a world where you can publicly, proudly say, I'm gay, I'm lesbian, I'm trans, I'm queer. And you can have a flag showing what fetish you're into. Mm -hmm. But when you say, I believe in smaller government, you have (laughs) to whisper whisper that. You have to whisper, yes. and oh, I can't come. I don't want to be. I can't be seen publicly. Any of them dog you have to stay, Republican phrases you can't say. You have to stay in the closet if you believe in smaller government and more personal freedom. That is there, true. So you—that's the real perversion. 
The real perversion is you believe in less government. How messed up is this? It is, and I think it's sad that the movement has taken this turn where, like I said, they've gone from being the bullied to the bullies so that um, they've, they've gotten, now that you know, it's accepted among society, it's okay to be gay, um, rather than just being like, all right, let's, let's be happy about that and let's also let other people be free to be who they are as well. It's rather than that, it's become, all right, now everyone needs to celebrate with us, and you must celebrate. You must you you wave will a rainbow flag. Um, so it's become a forced celebration, and that is not good. One of my favorite YouTube videos is when Kim Jong Il died, and uh, in front of one of his many many statues, his beloved followers were taking turns crying and weeping, and the soldiers were there and they knew cameras were on, and they would weep and scream. And then the next group would come, and they would weep and scream louder. And with each new group, they would go into deeper uh, hysterics mm -hmm. to prove to the state that they were more distraught than the last because they had to seem more in love with the great leader who just passed away. Because heaven forbid they didn't, they didn't act uh, in accordance to the way that they were supposed yeah. to act. And they would just save their own skin. And, and your rainbow exhaustion, rainbow fatigue, I feel there's a lot of that going on right now. That, yeah, they don't care. They're happy, mm -hmm. they're happy with what's going on, but they have to do this. And in the same way, they have to be in the closet to say, I love that you guys are brave enough to say you want smaller government. I wish I could say that publicly, but I, I can't. I might lose yeah. my job. That's terrifying. That is, when I say this is North Korean kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. No, I, I agree with you completely. I think it is sad, especially, like I said, amongst a community who fought for years to be who they are publicly and freely, that that really hasn't happened. If we ide ideologically and with our belief systems we're not allowed to express that freely, then we, we've missed the goal. Um, we rerouted the whole movement and we've screwed everything up. So watching since Stonewall and the movement, uh, you first had the, the gay pride parades mm -hmm. where gay people put them out, themselves out to be ridiculed which was this incredible thing of bravery when you look at it. They, mm -hmm. You know, they'd go on the floats and they, they'd be crazy and people go, oh, look at those queers, blah, 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 blah. But what they were doing was part of the movement to say, hey, we exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be crazy and you're going to look at us. And then the village people came and said, we're going to look this way and <laughs> yeah. you're going to look at us. Uh, uh, we're here and we're going to stay. And that was a huge statement. The next step, and I remember this from high school, was forcing people out of the closet. And this was a, this was a daring step, mm -hmm. and it was controversial inside the gay movement, which was, hey, we know that guy is gay. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to come out of the closet, but we have to force him out of the closet. I think that might have happened with Rock Hudson. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of the gay community was very against that because um, coming out lives. should be something... That's a very, very personal. personal, yeah, and it should be but, done on your own timetable. But I do remember stories of that where they were outing right. people. Well, I remember it. I was, you know, a, a kid in high school, and, and, but I remember the the reasoning was, if we're ever going to move the ball, people mm -hmm. need to be forced out so that um, uh, the people against gays go, wait a second, that guy's gay. He seems so normal, and this guy's yeah. gay. He seems so normal. Cousin Bob? Cousin Bob is gay? <laughs> but but I love Bob. How he can't he doesn't seem like a pervert. And 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 so I see that too. And I'm I'm thinking about the situation you're in. You know what? Mm -hmm. You're the new pervert. You are now the <laughs> yeah. new pervert, not because you're gay, but because you're conservative, because mm -hmm. you want more freedom and less government. And you're brave enough. To, to be out there on the pride parade, you're the guy on the float now going, go ahead and ridicule me. Yeah. And I wonder the new steps will be, you know who else is? Yeah, that woman over there came over and said, I like
like your shirt. Yeah. You know, at some point, yeah, we'll we are be, kind of, it kind of has to. You know, she's one of us. <laughs> or you do want Force to Force her out of the closet. She's one of us. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it has kind of gotten to that point where, like, I I would send this, out there. send this message to anyone out there, you know, listening who is gay and conservative but afraid to be public about it is that we, your voice is very important, and we need you to be just be true to who you are and yeah. not afraid to oh. say, I yeah, this is how I feel, this is what I think, because the more people see that, the more I think that's actually going to help the entire LGBT community when they see that not all the gays are like the ones you see, you know, half naked on the float. Um, there are some who, like, they're just like everyone, which even, the even vast if, majority even if they're half like naked, Even if they're half naked might. on the float, good for them. But <laughs> let me push you on this. If somebody's gay and they say, but I can't come out as mm-hmm. conservative for the same reason Rock Hudson or whoever couldn't come out in the 70s, I don't want to lose my livelihood. And in this North Korean yeah. cancel culture we have now, to come out as conservative, to say, no, I do believe in lower taxes. No, mm-hmm. I do believe in gun rights and property rights and educational choice and not insane environmental regulations. No, I believe mm-hmm. that people should be able to afford electricity. You know, you can be canceled. You, be, you could be shunned from your workplace. You know, um, I do believe in... Um, uh, that people, uh, hell, I might even believe that people, I don't believe in crazy pronouns. I believe there are <laughs> singular people. I'm not going to look at somebody mm-hmm. who's a singular person and call that person a plural they. Mm-hmm. These are the things that will get you fired. Talk to that person. What do you, what, as somebody who's brave enough mm-hmm. to be a gay man and say, no, I stand up to that. How do you convince somebody like you who isn't quite courageous as you are? Um, well, first of all, I've, I've kind of found that it's usually not as bad as we anticipate it to be when we do just speak our truths and when you and when you just kind of explain how you feel about it. Now, there are there are nice ways to say things and there are not so nice ways to say things. So if you approach it in a way that's very kind of understanding to the other side, just say, this is how I feel. Um, it's usually not as bad, but should you do, should you face a consequence like that? I, I personally feel like I'd rather live honestly by my, as who I am and deal with whatever comes, face those consequences and move forward honest to who I am than live a lie. And that's what the entire LG, the the whole gay pride movement was from the beginning was we just want to be who we are. And there's a lot of other movements that have been very similar. Um, with human rights. And so why why is this any different? Why should we not be courageous to be who we are? And and the more people to do it also, the easier it will be for others. You know, when you trail trailblaze that path, the people who come behind you, it'll be easier. So the more gay conservatives who speak up and come out of that closet as a Republican or as a libertarian or as just conservative, um, the better it will be for everyone else. So really, if they come out, it's not as bad as they think? It's not as bad. I, I, I've i gone to events as, you know, like there are times you, I'll be... Were you a liberal before <laughs> and then? Well, like that was the label that was probably thrown yeah. upon me. But uh, like I said, honestly, I feel like I'm the same. Right. Um, but just that idea of everyone should just be free to be who they are. Even if I disagree with them, they have every right to have that belief um, moved kind of from being a leftist viewpoint to a right-leaning viewpoint. And so I just kind of moved with it. So now I'm over here. Uh, and so, um, but yeah, because I've, like I said, I've gone, sometimes I'm the gay amongst the Republicans. Right. And then sometimes I'm the Republican amongst the gays. And, <laughs> and, and you'll have people who may come up. I, like I said, it's, it's harder when you're the gay or the Republican amongst the gays. But Isn't that amazing? They'll come up and they may, it's like, how could you do that? How could you believe that? Don't you know they hate you? And then you have a little conversation and then that's about it. Then you both move on. Um, and either they will just leave you alone or you move on and you have conversations about other stuff. I was at an event a few years ago. The Pride Center here in Denver had their big um, gala and I went and they sat me at, 
the table of a very left-leaning progressive organization, which I was like, they probably did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's see what happens when we put him at their table. And um, there was a there was a little spicy of, at moments, but by the end, like we were all fine. So I'm like, you know, the jokes on them. We turned out to be friends. So like. It was fine. I've gone to, I've gone to a couple of ACLU <laughs> yeah. dinners myself, so I know, there was that, a, I know that feeling. At one point, I did have to change, like, all right, do, do you have a dog? I have a dog, too. Let's talk about our dogs, because the other conversations, just, it's not going anywhere. And then you're, you're fine. So I do think that we, as a, just, I don't know, I don't like saying we as a society, but like the culture that we live in now, we're too afraid to talk to each other. Um, we we're assume, afraid of getting canceled. Yeah, we we assume that the other side's going to cancel us, or they're going to do something. And I'm not saying that that's not a possibility, um, but I think it, it's going to take people to be brave enough to do it anyway. Like I might be canceled, I might make people mad, I might get kicked out of this place, but I'm not going to hide who I am, just because because of that fear. I'm not going to, you know, not be who I am. Um, because of that, and I think the again, the more people do that, the easier the easier it will become. And, and sadly, I feel like we're going the other direction right now, though. Read an article by <laughs> um, a guy in California. He's a target shooter. He said, "I have no problem coming out as gay, but I would never come out as a gun owner at work, yeah. as a computer programmer in California. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't get hired." And I thought, how sad. It is you sad. Go, you go back, you go back a couple of decades. Of course, you're a gun owner, mm-hmm. but you would never come out as gay because you might never get hired. And both of those are just ridiculously mm-hmm. pathetic, sad, and terrible common comments on on society. I'm glad we got rid of one. Why did we grow this other one? Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's intolerance is just ugly. Intoler- intolerance is hate is hate. And how this side, which grew out of this hate mm-hmm. and has developed this other intolerance, I haven't quite figured out. And I, I thought as I'm seeing the acceptance of the gay lifestyle, I'm seeing marriage equality, that, that it would be tolerance. Because mm-hmm. who better? Who better to understand it? I didn't know it would turn into the French Revolution mm-hmm. and go the other direction. You know, and see, yeah. seeing people I loved having to go through it and the fear of coming out in the 70s, oh, it was, it was, it was bad stuff. Yeah. And one of the things, and I don't want to like put it completely on um, younger generations. Oh, it's um, good. Listen, I'm older, but... <laughs> I'm older than you. Always blame the young. You can never go wrong with this. I've talked to several young people who are in the LGBT community, and they truly believe that right now, they as young LGBT people are facing more hatred and discrimination than anybody else ever has in our country's history or anyone else in the world is right now. And both of those things are wrong completely. Like they, It's better right now for everyone. And so, and I don't know, how, part of, <laughs> how do they, how, help me with that one, help me with that part one. Part of me also feels like, I feel like gay culture or LGBT culture, whatever, um, has almost been like fighting for rights, marching for our rights has become part of who we are. Yeah. So much so that now that- You can't give it up? Yeah, like we can't give it up. So now we need to make up victimhood and oppression so we can continue our marches and our fights and, um, and, and maybe the younger generation sees that and they want to embrace that as part of their LGBT identity, that they're going to fight for their rights and they're going to fight for freedom, which what is sad is like there are people in this world who you could be fighting for. You know, if you're going to speak out against um, oppression and victimhood, talk about some countries in, in the Caribbean or right. the Africa or the Middle East where you will be killed for oh, yeah. being gay. Speak out for that person. But instead, it's still like, no, I'm the one who's the victim, and I'm the one everyone looks down upon. And there are, are people who genuinely feel fear. Like the, the Human Rights Campaign just put out a thing like the ACLU did, or the, not the ACLU, the AA, 
NAACP. NAACP. Right. Too many ac- too, too many, many acronyms <laughs> out there, but that they said Florida is a dangerous place to go to, or they've declared a state of emergency for LGBT people in this country, and. I know some individuals who genuinely believe that. They're afraid now. And I'm like, who has ever cared in your life that you're gay? Like, no one cares right now. It's just, they, but they buy into that victimhood narrative and they want to be part of this. They want to be part of that movement and they want to be part of that culture that's fighting for rights, which is good that you want to fight for rights, but this isn't the battle. The battle is not happening right now. So what's the major goal for you as president of the Colorado chapter of Log Cabin Republicans? What, what's the goal? What, what is, is there an issue or is it just to, to get more gay people to vote um, Republican? Part of it is like this whole discussion we've had. I want um, people to visibly see that there are gay conservatives and see that the Republican Party isn't just a bunch of old straight white men, um, that there is a diversity plus to help the community to see that it's okay for you to openly be I think a that's Republican. a real challenge. I think that's a real and, and by the way, I'll say I'm old enough to remember there are times at Republican assemblies that law cabin Republicans were, were heckled. Mm-hmm. That was you know, really embarrassing. And, and um, mind you, yeah. I, I was drunk when I did it. I apologize. No. It, if it, I was drunk, I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it there, is, there, is a, there is an anti gay. Yeah. Religious wing, and that does have that and is there, it is, and, and, it's, um, and that's embarrassing, but it's dying off, and it's it's such a minority of a minority, but and it, it, it does exist on both sides. I always tell really? people look look into why Pete Buttigieg lost South Carolina, and you mm. will discover that homophobia exists in the Democrat Party too. Yeah. Um, but going back to to us and what we're doing. Let me tell you, kind let me of... tell you a, a gay couple with dual income, you know what they want? Lower taxes. Yes, yeah. they do. And so, so I think it is good to have conversations with both sides um, because I will talk to people sometimes who like, I, I get, if ever anyone says something crazy, either in the gay world or the Republican world, I get calls and emails from whichever the other side is, like, look what they're doing. Oh, that's and right. So, How could you possibly yeah. be part of that? Look what your gays are doing, or look what the Republicans <laughs> are doing. And um, Yes, both of them sometimes say crazy things, and um, sometimes they are hard to for me to <laughs> defend. But when it is like a Republican, oftentimes I'll go find that person, if it's someone local, and I'll talk to them. And normally I, I realize, like, they're fine. They don't have a problem with LGBT people. It's usually one of these more um, deeper agendas that have yeah. wound their way into the LGBT movement because it has become very politicized, um, especially that new, I really hate that new rainbow flag with the brown and the black and the pink and the white. I think they call it the Philadelphia flag or the progressive rainbow flag because it is very Marxist. Yeah. Because now the old rainbow flag was fine. There were six colors. They represented like health and spirit and love and different things. And, and that combined, it just represented everyone. Um, and now the flag's very like divisive. Like here's the stripe for brown people. Here's the stripe for black people. Here's the stripe for trans people. It's like if, if you're a white cisgender gay man who, if you historically look at the movement, that's the group that did most of the fighting. They don't like to talk about that anymore. They like to pretend they don't exist, but the cisgender, white, <laughs> gays did all this fighting and now that flag kind of has pushed them off. There is no stripe for a white person. There is no stripe for a gay person, which there shouldn't be, but there also shouldn't be a stripe for like brown me. Like I don't need a brown stripe on the flag to have been represented by it. It already represented me and so I, yeah. Sorry to go off on that tangent, no, but I hate I understand the, the point. new flag. I, hate the, I new flag. hate the new flag. See, you're just becoming an old cranky <laughs> man like me. There is Probably. hope for you. <laughs> hey, people want to get more information about Log Cabin Republicans. Where's a good place to go? Um, logcabincolo.com, or is it .org? Well, log okay. cabin. <laughs> go to Google and type Log Cabin Republican Colorado will pop up. I think it's logcabincolo.org. 
And if there's a gay us. person out there who's a little scared of saying, hey, I'm conservative, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a Republican, yeah. but to say, no, I'm, I'm... Yeah, we have we have members who are libertarians, we have some that are just moderates or independents, um, and they just want to come hear what we have to say and hang out with people who have different viewpoints than what you normally get elsewhere, so... My, my comparison to gays coming out of the closet in the 70s, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, you're not alone. Yeah, I think that was the big thing for the people I knew was, yeah. no, you're not alone. There's a world out there. People have gone through it before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got a gay cousin mm -hmm. who's a little older than I am. And like, damn it. I had to come out of the closet. There was no, there was no club in high school, no gay lesbian support group in high school. I had to come out to my army father. You think that was easy? <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's got to be the same sort of thing now. But mm -hmm. if you're a conservative gay or lesbian, you know, you're not alone. Yes, yeah. your, your movement has gone off the rails. You don't have to be a communist just because you're a gay or lesbian. Yes, I mean, I... And like I had mentioned earlier that being gay isn't fun anymore because they took the edge away from it. So if you want that, you edge, want that back, edge back, <laughs> <laughs> come out as a gay conservative. Um, it's fun. Val, you get to have that edge again. <laughs> thank you so much. This was wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.